It's amazing to think, right, uh, with all we've learned about the Giza pyramids over the years, they just keep on surprising us. Yeah, I mean, it seems like every time we think we're getting close to understanding them, something new pops up that throws everything we thought we knew into question. That's right. And uh, and speaking of surprises, get this, there's a brand new discovery that was just announced back in March of 2025, and it's completely changing the game. Oh, yeah, this one's a big one. It was found deep beneath the Khafre Pyramid, you know, the one right next to the Great Pyramid. Right, right, the Khafre Pyramid. Yeah. And this discovery has the potential to, I mean, it could totally rewrite our understanding of these ancient wonders. No kidding. Yeah. It's like we're getting a glimpse into a whole other dimension of ancient Egyptian civilization. Exactly. And that's what we're diving into today on the show. We're going to unpack this discovery piece by piece and see what it tells us about how the ancient Egyptians viewed the world uh, and maybe even how they built these incredible structures. We're going deep beneath the surface, literally and figuratively, to explore what might be one of the most significant finds in recent Egyptology. So uh, to guide us on this deep dive, we've got some pretty interesting source material. We're looking at uh, reports on a SAR scan. That's synthetic aperture radar. Right, SAR. And we've also got this artist's rendering that gives us a visual idea of what this underground world might look like. It's pretty mind-blowing stuff. Oh, I'll bet. So let's start with the basics. Uh, March 2025, that's practically yesterday in archaeological terms. A team of researchers led by Corrado Malanga from the University of Pisa and Filippo Biondi from the University of Strathclyde. They're the ones who made this incredible discovery. Yeah, they were using some pretty cutting-edge tech, too. Mm -hmm. SAR is a little different from the ground-penetrating radar, or GPR, that's been used in the past. Right, SAR. Now, I'm no radar expert, so break this down yeah. for us. What makes SAR special, and why was it so important for finding this hidden structure? Okay, so imagine you're trying to look under the ground with traditional radar. You basically send out one signal and wait for the echo to come back. Okay, got it. Kind of like shouting into a canyon and listening for the echo. Exactly. But SAR is more like taking a bunch of snapshots from different angles as the radar is moving. Then you use some fancy computer algorithms to combine all those snapshots into a really detailed picture. Huh. So it's like taking a panoramic photo with your phone, but instead of a landscape, you're getting a view beneath the ground. That's a great analogy. The team in this case used software developed by Filippo Biondi, and it was specially designed to detect these tiny, tiny vibrations in the stone itself. Vibrations? Wait, so they weren't just looking for empty spaces or changes in density? Nope. This software is way more sensitive. It can pick up on those subtle movements that are always happening in the earth. You know, even solid rock has a little bit of give. Wow, so even the tiniest tremors can reveal what's hidden deep underground. That's incredible. Exactly. And by analyzing how those vibrations change as they pass through different materials or hit voids or structures, they can build a map of what's down there. That's crazy. It's like they're listening to the Earth whisper its secrets. I like that. So using this SAR technology and the special vibration software, what did they find beneath the Caffrey Pyramid? Well, hold on to your hats because this is where things get really interesting. Near the base of the pyramid, they found five separate structures. Each one has five horizontal levels and a sloping roof. And get this, they're all connected by these perfectly straight pathways. Wow, five identical structures with multiple levels all laid out in a precise geometric pattern. That sounds like something was deliberately built down there. It does, doesn't it? Like it was planned out in advance. But wait, there's more? Oh, there's always more with the pyramid. Yeah. So tell me, what else did they find deeper down? Okay, so below these five structures, the scan showed eight of these uh, cylindrical formations. They're being described as vertical hollow wells, and each one has a spiraling pathway going down around it. Eight cylindrical wells, each with a spiral pathway going down. Mm -hmm. It's pretty unique. You don't see that kind of structure very often, especially not in ancient Egypt. I know, right? And they're arranged in a specific pattern, too. They're in two parallel rows running north to south beneath the pyramid. Hmm. North to south. Interesting. And how far down do these wells go? Pretty far. They extend down 648 meters. To put that in perspective, that's deeper than most of the world's deepest subway stations. 648 meters. That's wow. nuts. So these aren't just small shafts. We're talking about massive underground tunnels. Right. And it gets even wilder. At that depth, that eight wells, they all merge into two huge cubic structures. Cubic structures, like giant underground boxes. Exactly. Each one is about 80 meters on each side. So picture a cube as tall as a 25-story building buried deep beneath the pyramid. 
That's mind-boggling. We're talking about a truly massive underground complex. Yeah. So far, we've got these five interconnected structures near the surface, then these deep wells with spiraling pathways, and then at the bottom, these gigantic cubic chambers. Right. And based on the data, the researchers think this whole network could extend up to two kilometers beneath the Giza Plateau. Two kilometers? That's like an entire underground city. Yeah. And we haven't even talked about the artist's rendering yet. What does that show? Well, the rendering is based on the SAR data, and it gives us a glimpse into what these underground spaces might look like. Inside, there's these massive stone pillars, and look at this, they're covered in hieroglyphs. Hieroglyphs at that depth. That's Oops. incredible. What kind of messages do you think they hold? I have no idea, but it's clear that these underground structures weren't just utilitarian spaces. They had some kind of symbolic or religious significance, too. You know, for years, the main theory has been that the pyramids were primarily tombs, elaborate burial chambers for the pharaohs. Right, but this discovery really challenges that idea. I mean, if they went through all this trouble to build this huge complex underground, it must have been for something more than just a burial place. It makes you think, right? I mean, maybe the pyramids were more than just tombs. Maybe they were connected to the ancient Egyptian beliefs about the afterlife, the journey of the soul through the underworld, which they called the do-it. Yeah, that's fascinating. So we've got this vast underground network, potentially representing the duat, and then these cylindrical wells with the spiral pathways. Those could have been used for specific rituals or ceremonies. Right. Maybe they symbolized a descent into the underworld or a cyclical journey of the soul. And those hieroglyphs on the pillars, maybe they provided guidance for the journey or told the story of the afterlife. I like that. But let's not forget about the more practical possibilities, too. This network could have served some very real-world purposes as well. Absolutely. Building the pyramids would have been a logistical nightmare. They needed somewhere to store all those materials and house the thousands of workers. Right. This underground complex could have been a massive storage facility or even a temporary living space for the workers. It would have been a way to keep everything organized and out of the desert heat. Makes sense. And don't forget about water. Giza is in a desert, so managing water resources would have been critical. Oh, right. Maybe they built this network to access and control groundwater. The wells could have been part of a sophisticated water storage or distribution system. And that connects to some of the visual analogies in our sources. There's a reference to a nuclear reactor core submerged in water. You know, how those use water for cooling and moderating their reactions. Right. So are we saying the ancient Egyptians had nuclear reactors? No, no, not at all. It's more of a symbolic analogy. The reactor core image is just a way to think about the potential importance of water within this underground world. Okay, got it. So water might have played a key role, both practically and symbolically. And then there's that other analogy, the one with the offshore oil platform. Right. Right, those platforms are built on these huge cylindrical supports that go down into the water. Yeah, and they have to be incredibly stable to withstand the ocean currents and waves. Exactly. Mm. So maybe the ancient Egyptians designed these underground wells to interact with groundwater in a similar way, either to ensure stability or to manage water resources. Interesting. So both analogies are pointing to the significance of water, whether it's functional or symbolic within this underground complex. They really are. And of course, whenever you have a discovery like this, it's bound to spark some unconventional theories. Oh, yeah. Our sources mention a few of those. Some pretty far out stuff. Some yeah. people are suggesting that the pyramids were built to harness natural energies, you know, like Nikola Tesla's ideas. Hmm. Yeah, there's that theory. Mm. And then some folks believe that the pyramids were actually ancient power plants generating energy through resonance or acoustics. And then there's the really fringe idea that the pyramids were weapons utilizing some kind of scalar energy technology. It's easy to get carried away with these theories, especially when you see how complex and seemingly mechanical this underground network is. Yeah, that engineered look definitely fuels the imagination. But it's important to remember that these are just theories. They're not supported by mainstream archaeology. Right. We got to be careful not to jump to conclusions. But it's still fun to speculate. Agreed. So what's next for this discovery? What are the researchers hoping to do now? Well, the team behind the discovery, they're called the Coffrey Project, and they're really eager to get down there and start excavating. That would be incredible to actually go inside those chambers and see them firsthand. But is that even possible? Well, getting permission to excavate at a site like Giza, that's a huge challenge. It's a World Heritage Site, and the Egyptian authorities are very protective of it. I can understand that. It's not like you can just grab a shovel and start digging under the pyramids, but... Even if excavation isn't possible right now, there are still other things they can do, right? Oh, absolutely. 
they can do more SAR scans with even more advanced technology. Uh -huh. That could give them an even clearer picture of the entire network. Right, and if they ever do get to excavate, they'll be able to use radiocarbon dating to determine the age of these structures, and they can analyze any inscriptions or carvings they find to try to understand their purpose. It's like we've only just opened the first page of a whole new chapter in the story of the Giza pyramids. Exactly, and it makes you wonder what else is out there waiting to be discovered. I know, right? If something this huge could stay hidden for so long, what other secrets are buried beneath our feet? It's a humbling thought, and it makes you realize how much we still don't know about the past. It really does. And who knows what kind of amazing things we'll find in the future. So for all of you listening out there, think about this. If such a massive and intricate network could remain hidden beneath one of the most famous landmarks on Earth, what else is out there waiting to be uncovered? What other assumptions about ancient civilizations might be challenged by new discoveries? It's a truly fascinating question and one that we may never fully answer. But the search itself, the pursuit of knowledge and understanding, that's what makes archaeology so captivating. I couldn't agree more. And with that, we'll leave you to ponder the mysteries of the pyramids and the endless possibilities of discovery until our next deep dive.